All right, Jake, I'm filming. So guys, um, I'm in the hospital. I had an accident, broke my back. I get my brain scan at the hospital to see what's going on. They tell me how- Oh yeah, bro, I got a new big hole right there. Oh, bro, I got a big bro. hole in my brain, bro. Oh That's my big ass hole right here. I told you I feel stupider. The boxing world reeled as news broke that Jake Paul had pulled the plug on his highly anticipated, albeit controversial, fight against Mike Tyson. This dramatic turn of events comes just days after a video surfaced online sending shockwaves through the combat sports community. The footage depicted a sparring session between Paul and Tyson that quickly turned south. In the video, Tyson, despite being significantly older, unleashed a flurry of vicious blows on Paul, who appeared overwhelmed and unable to defend himself. The clip ends with Paul slumped against the ropes, his face a mask of pain and humiliation. In the aftermath, speculation ran rampant. Was this a staged publicity stunt to drum up interest in the fight? Or was it a genuine display of Tyson's raw power, serving as a brutal wake-up call for Paul? Jake Paul, however, offered a different perspective. In a scathing social media post, he addressed the incident directly. What you saw in that video, Paul wrote, was not a sparring session. It was an assault. Mike Tyson clearly never intended this to be a training exercise. He came in there with one goal, to hurt me as badly as he could. Paul went on to express his disappointment and disillusionment. I've dedicated myself to this sport, he continued. I've trained relentlessly, pushing myself to the limit. But after what happened, I can't, in good conscience, step into the ring with someone who so blatantly disregards the safety of his opponent. This announcement sent the fight world into a frenzy. Fans who were eager to witness a clash between the YouTube star and the legendary boxer were left disappointed. Critics who scoffed at Paul's boxing legitimacy in the first place use this as an opportunity to further ridicule him. However, there were also voices of support for Paul's decision. Many commended him for prioritizing his health and safety over the allure of a lucrative payday. The incident also reignited discussions about the ethics of exhibition matches, particularly those involving older fighters who may not be operating at their peak physical condition. Whether this marks the definitive end of the Paul Tyson saga remains to be seen. Paul, in his social media statement, did leave the door open for a potential future rematch under the condition that stricter safety measures are implemented. However, the damage seems to be done. The brutal sparring session has cast a long shadow over the entire fight, raising questions about Tyson's intentions and leaving Paul with a bruised ego and a shaken confidence. The fallout from the shocking sparring video between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson intensified as Paul not only canceled the fight, but also launched a legal offensive. On top of the social media statement expressing his outrage, Paul's team filed a $200 million lawsuit against Tyson, accusing him of assault. The lawsuit went beyond the sparring session itself. Paul's legal team argued that Tyson's actions were premeditated and malicious. They claimed he entered the ring with the intent to inflict serious bodily harm, not to engage in a controlled training exercise. The lawsuit cited the video evidence along with witness testimonies to support their claims. This legal action added another layer of complexity to the already explosive situation. It sent a clear message that Paul wouldn't tolerate Tyson's alleged brutality and intended to seek significant financial compensation for the trauma and damage to his reputation. Day three, you still want to with me? Well, then what's going on with you guys? Because the last episode on here, there was shit talk back and forth. He was saying stuff about you on Twitter. You called him. There was more shit talk. Has there, have you guys talked anymore? Is that actually a fight that could happen? I think it could happen for, uh, as like an exhibition, probably. Just because you could. But I think he weight. thinks that he would win, and I would love to just like inf def deflate his little 130 pounds. So that's the only way it could happen right his exhibition just for the weight yeah and his footwork sucks like once i'm learning more about the sport it's like he's fast and quick and been doing it his whole life obviously but his feet oh, are a terrible part he got flat-footed stuck stuck tyson facing a barrage of criticism and a hefty lawsuit following the sparring incident with jake paul 
finally broke his silence. In a video posted on his social media channels, a visibly agitated Iron Mike addressed the situation head on. First of all, Tyson began, his voice laced with a barely contained growl. Let's get this straight. This wasn't some ballet class. This was boxing training, and you gotta respect the damn sport. Tyson then launched into his version of events. This kid, Jake Paul, he scoffed, comes waltzing into the gym, all full of himself, talking smack, disrespecting the legends. He thinks boxing is some kind of YouTube prank. Well, guess what? It's not. According to Tyson, Paul's constant clowning and disrespectful behavior towards him and his team pushed him over the edge. He was making light of everything, Tyson continued, mimicking my moves, calling me names. I told him to cut it out, showed him some restraint, but he just kept pushing it. Tyson then claimed the sparring session itself escalated organically. We started light, he explained, but then he got cocky, started throwing wild punches, showing no respect for technique. That's when I had to show him what happens when you mess around in the ring. The video then cut to a montage of Tyson's greatest hits, lightning fast knockouts, ferocious combinations, all seemingly intended as a message to Paul. Maybe, Tyson concluded, his voice hardening, that little taste will knock some sense into him. Boxing ain't a game. It's about discipline, respect, and the will to win. And if you don't have those things, you better stay out of the ring. Tyson's response was met with mixed reactions. Some fans rallied behind him, applauding him for putting a disrespectful youngster in his place. Others saw it as a self-serving justification for unnecessary violence. The lawsuit, they argued, only strengthened the case that Tyson acted out of anger rather than a desire to teach Paul a lesson. Regardless of public opinion, one thing was clear. Mike Tyson was unapologetic. He positioned himself as the defender of old-school boxing values, unwilling to tolerate disrespect towards the sport or its legends. Whether this narrative resonates with the wider audience or simply adds fuel to the fire of controversy remains to be seen talking a lot of shit and then you quit that's what's fucked if you weren't talking shit before the fight saying you're gonna ko him in two rounds and all this shit then it's different like that's why i think there's like a loss of respect there well so the best boxer on the planet is jake paul i mean if mike tyson says let's do this are you down 100 percent. in a fiery rebuttal to mike tyson's claims Jake Paul doubled down on his accusations and launched a fresh wave of attacks. Taking to his usual platform, social media, Paul unleashed a video filled with equal parts outrage and what some might call thinly veiled mockery. Mike Tyson, Paul began, a hint of a smirk playing on his lips, says I was disrespecting the sport? Give me a break. The only disrespect I saw was him disrespecting basic human decency. Paul then proceeded to dismantle Tyson's narrative piece by piece. He claims I was clowning around, I was there to train, not put on a comedy show. And as for mimicking his move, maybe if he still remembered proper form himself, he wouldn't have gotten so triggered. Paul's words dripped with sarcasm, clearly aiming to get under Tyson's already bristling skin. He then took a sharper turn, venturing into more controversial territory. Look, Paul continued, his voice turning serious, it's clear the man isn't well. He's living in the past, stuck in some glory day fantasy. And let's not forget the countless signs of brain damage, right? This comment ignited a firestorm. While Paul had garnered some sympathy for his initial stance against Tyson's alleged brutality, this remark felt callous and disrespectful. It reignited discussions about the ethics of exploiting someone's potential health issues for personal gain. Paul, however, remained undeterred. He wants to talk about respect, he asked rhetorically. Respect for the sport? Respect for his opponent? Where was that respect when he launched into a full-blown assault on me? Because, let's call it what it was, assault. Not a lesson. Not tough love. Assault. The video concluded with Paul reiterating his intention to pursue the lawsuit. He may be a legend, Paul concluded, but that doesn't give him a free pass to act like a maniac. This lawsuit is about sending a message. Violence has no place in boxing, especially not from someone who clearly invented his own version of the sport. Paul's response was a calculated gamble. While it garnered him headlines and kept the controversy alive, it also risked alienating a segment of the audience who found his comments distasteful. Only time would tell if this strategy would backfire or solidify his position as the wronged party in this highly public spectacle.
of a mistake that he made, but I mean, he's an idiot. And so he's not getting shit. So yeah, yeah. Literally, literally like the next offer for him is like nothing basically. Um, and like my brand only increases to like a whole nother level. And it's like, we probably would have been 50, 50 for that fight. And now it's like after this and everything, dog. I feel like I'm on you. It, there's just all these crazy things and it, it's just bad. And people are in this business just looking to, to make money over anything really yep. be patient take it fight by fight and that and that moment will come um for sure but jake paul wasn't done as the back and forth with mike tyson intensified paul upped the ante not just with his rhetoric but with the lawsuit itself in a press conference streamed live on his channel Paul announced an amendment to the initial filing. The lawsuit, which previously sought $200 million for assault, now explicitly mentioned aggression as a central cause for seeking damages. This isn't just about me, Paul declared, his voice firm and laced with a touch of self-righteousness. This is about sending a message to anyone who thinks boxing is a free-for-all. There are rules, there's respect, and there's a damn good reason for them. Paul then elaborated on his definition of aggression in this context. Mike Tyson proved he's incapable of controlling his aggression, he explained. He wasn't there to train. He was there to unleash his anger, and I was the unfortunate target. The amended lawsuit included additional details from the sparring session, with witness testimonies corroborating Paul's claims of excessive force and a complete disregard for safety protocols. There were also talks of including medical records to document the physical and emotional toll the incident had taken on Paul. Some people might call this a publicity stunt, Paul acknowledged, addressing his critics directly. But let me tell you, there's nothing fun about being brutalized in a boxing ring. There's nothing glamorous about suing a legend. I'm doing this because it's the right thing to do. Paul's focus on aggression served a strategic purpose. It shifted the conversation away from the initial accusations of disrespect and clowning around. By framing himself as the victim of uncontrolled rage, Paul aimed to garner wider public sympathy. However, this strategy wasn't without its risks. Focusing solely on aggression downplayed the potential role Paul's own actions might have played in escalating the situation. Critics pointed out that any professional fighter should be prepared for a certain level of intensity during sparring. The amended lawsuit also raised questions about the precedent it might set. Would it discourage older fighters from participating in exhibition matches altogether? Would it make trainers and promoters overly cautious, diluting the raw spectacle that often draws audiences to these non-competitive bouts? Regardless of the long-term implications, one thing was certain. Jake Paul had transformed himself from a controversial YouTuber turned boxer into a legal crusader against unchecked aggression in the ring. Whether he would emerge victorious in court or simply emerge as a savvy self-promoter remained to be seen. But one thing was for sure. The saga of Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson continued to dominate headlines and keep the boxing world buzzing.